versus crew member response when an illness or death occurs on board the aircraft. With over 3 billion passengers flying each year, communicable diseases can spread rapidly, particularly within the confines of an aircraft environment. Passengers with a communicable disease pose a health risk to others on board the aircraft and can ultimately expose the disease to the worldwide population. Due to cabin air filtration systems on modern aircraft, the likelihood of transmitting illnesses via airborne contamination remains relatively low. However, an ill passenger or crew member can still transmit the illness to others seated around them through coughing or sneezing or through direct contact with cabin furnishings. Individual countries have developed their own specific policies and regulations for responding to the threat of communicable diseases entering their country. In earlier times, to protect the population from plague epidemics, ships arriving in coastal cities were required to anchor offshore for a period of 40 days before docking. This practice, referred to as quarantine, is derived from the Italian words quaranta giorni which means 40 days. Quarantine separates and restricts the movement of people who have been exposed to a contagious disease, so that their condition can be monitored to see if they become sick. Sick individuals are then isolated from healthy individuals in an attempt to contain the spread of disease. Although not as prevalent in today's society, countries still enforce isolation and quarantine laws in order to protect the public from contagious diseases. Airlines operate to destinations all over the world where health standards and types of disease vary greatly. Crew members traveling abroad should be aware of diseases to which they may be exposed. For your own protection, ensure that all immunizations are up to date and take necessary precautions such as a preventative treatment for destination-specific illnesses, such as malaria. Crew members should also carry their vaccination records. In some countries, local health authorities may require inspection of these documents. Furthermore, if you suspect you have a contagious illness, follow your company's policy and refrain from working until you are fully recovered. If you develop symptoms during flight, discontinue your duties as soon as it is safe to do so. If a communicable disease is suspected on board the aircraft, minimize the risk of exposure by performing the following. When interacting with a potentially contagious person, wear appropriate personal protective equipment, including a face mask and disposable gloves. Treat all bodily fluids as if they are infectious. Clean and disinfect any contaminated areas. Dispose of contaminated waste products using company procedures. And thoroughly wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. If soap and water are not available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. If a communicable disease is suspected to be on board an aircraft, the threat of spreading the disease can be reduced by limiting the number of people who are in direct contact with the ill person. This is accomplished by designating only one crew member to assist the ill person and keeping interactions as brief as possible. If additional seating is available, 
Separate the person from others by at least six feet. Use care not to contaminate other areas of the aircraft. And as long as flight safety is not compromised, move adjacent passengers to other locations. Provide the ill person with a plastic bag for disposing of contaminated items, such as tissues or air sickness bags, and encourage them to wash their hands or use an alcohol based hand sanitizer if soap and water is not available. If they are not having difficulty breathing, a face mask can be provided from the aircraft medical kit. If breathing issues or vomiting is a concern, the ill person should not wear a face mask. Instead, masks can be supplied to nearby passengers. Additionally, ask the ill person to remain seated except when needing to use the lavatory. If possible, designate a lavatory for use only by the ill person and place a sign on the door indicating that no other passengers should use this lavatory. In addition to the typical medical equipment on board an aircraft, a Universal Precaution Kit, or UPK, may be used for protective and cleaning purposes. A UPK contains protective equipment used in managing illness-related incidents, particularly those involving contact with body fluids. A typical UPK includes the following equipment. A dry powder that converts liquid into a granulated gel, a germicidal disinfectant for surface cleaning, skin wipes, face and eye protection, disposable gloves, a protective apron or gown, a large absorbent towel, a pickup scoop with scraper, a disposable waste bag labeled biohazard, and instructions. While airborne, if an area of the aircraft becomes contaminated with bodily fluids, the area must be cleaned and disinfected to prevent additional contamination. If possible, passengers should be relocated to an uncontaminated area. Obtain the UPK and use the appropriate equipment for the type of contamination present. For non-porous surfaces, such as walls and tray tables, any visible contamination should be removed and the area cleaned and disinfected. For porous surfaces such as carpet or upholstery, remove as much of the contaminant as possible and cover the area with an absorbent material. After the contaminant has been absorbed, remove the absorbent material and clean and disinfect the area. After the area has been thoroughly cleaned, place all contaminated items inside the biohazard bag and remove your gloves using care not to contaminate yourself or your clothing. If the biohazard bag is not available or has already been used, a regular plastic bag labeled biohazard may be used. Tie or tape the bag shut to avoid spillage and store it in a secure location until it can be properly disposed. Thoroughly wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer if water is not available.
If a passenger or crew member is showing signs of illness while airborne, first seek assistance from medical professionals to make an initial assessment of the situation. These medical professionals may be currently on board the aircraft or can be reached via voice communications on the ground if necessary. After the initial assessment has taken place, determine the best course of action, whether that be to proceed to the scheduled destination or to divert to another airport where appropriate health agencies can assist with the response. If a diversion is required, make an announcement to the passengers about the incident. Passengers should be kept informed of the situation to the maximum extent possible. However, crew members should be sensitive as to the level of detail that is disclosed. The pilot in command should follow their company's reporting policy, in addition to any reporting requirements of the departure and destination countries. Timely reporting ensures adequate response measures are available on the ground, thereby reducing the risk of spreading the disease. Although it is not the responsibility of airline employees to screen and manage passengers who may be ill, crew members need to be aware of the symptoms associated with a communicable disease. A communicable disease should be suspected if the person exhibits a fever of 38 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit or greater, skin temperatures that feel warm to the touch, or provides a history of feeling feverish. In addition, symptoms that may indicate a communicable disease include a skin rash, difficulty breathing, a persistent cough, decreased consciousness, confusion, unexplained bruising or bleeding, persistent diarrhea, persistent vomiting other than air sickness, a headache with a stiff neck, appears obviously unwell, has had a fever for more than 48 hours, or has symptoms or other indications of a communicable disease. The initial report of an illness or death on board the aircraft is initiated by the pilot in command, notifying the nearest air traffic control facility. The information provided in the notification must include the following. The aircraft's identification, the departure airport, the destination airport, estimated time of arrival, number of persons on board, number of suspected cases on board, and the nature of the public health risk, if known. After receiving information about an illness or death on board the aircraft, the air traffic control facility will contact the destination and departure airports, who will then contact the local health authorities. The local health authorities then contact an airline representative and the airport authorities for subsequent communication with the aircraft concerning medical details and to prepare for the aircraft's arrival. Aside from the initial notification to the air traffic facility, subsequent communications with the aircraft using normal radio communication channels should be avoided. Depending on the type of communication facilities available, it may not be possible to communicate with the aircraft until it is closer to its destination. The decision on where to park the aircraft will be made by airport authorities, in coordination with other government and health agencies, based on the severity of the event and the scope of the response. The location may be the original gate, a secure remote gate, or an isolated area. When the aircraft is parked at its original assigned gate, medical personnel will have immediate access to the aircraft, and passengers will be able to quickly disembark. However, in this situation, 
the ill person may introduce contamination to the passenger boarding bridge and gate area, ultimately making the situation more difficult to manage. If the aircraft is parked at a secure remote gate, medical personnel will have unrestricted access to the aircraft. However, the location on the airport may prevent the responders from quickly accessing the aircraft. In this situation, the aircraft may have to be moved to another gate for passenger deplaning. If the aircraft is parked at an isolated area of the airport, Responders may need special equipment to board the aircraft, which could prevent medical personnel from quickly accessing the aircraft. Furthermore, the aircraft may have to be moved to a gate for passenger deplaning or buses brought in for transporting arriving passengers to the terminal. Prior to parking the aircraft, passengers should be informed that the ill person will require a medical evaluation before the remaining passengers may leave the aircraft. After the aircraft is parked, medical personnel will board the aircraft and perform an evaluation on the ill person. It is important that the evaluation is completed expeditiously and the ill person is promptly removed from the aircraft if warranted. Keeping passengers on an aircraft for an extended period of time may exacerbate the situation due to unsanitary lavatories or cabin conditions, poor cabin ventilation, or insufficient food and water. Passengers should be kept informed of the situation. If information is not provided, they may attempt to access it using other methods, such as using their cell phones to contact friends and families. Passengers should be notified prior to the aircraft being parked that before anyone else can be allowed to exit the aircraft, the ill person will require a medical evaluation. This announcement should be made again as medical personnel are boarding the aircraft and periodically throughout their evaluation. After all passengers have deplaned, the aircraft's cleaning crew should be informed of all areas on the aircraft with which the ill person came in contact and that personal protective equipment should be used while cleaning the area. If the person changed seats or used the lavatory, these areas should also be mentioned. For your own personal health, if you develop symptoms or have other medical concerns, consult with your personal health care provider. The health organization where you live or where your flight arrived may also contact you to verify your well-being and to prevent further spread of the disease. If a communicable disease is suspected on your aircraft, health authorities may ask travelers to complete a public health passenger locator card. The information contained on this card provides health authorities with contact information of individuals who may have been exposed to a communicable disease.